Got some new releases out today. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I'm going to create a card for a wedding theme featuring a new set from me called I Do. Oh, no, wait, you did. <laughs> It's called You Did. Get it? I do, but you did, so you're given. <sighs> it's all gonna make sense. Stick around. That card project is coming up next. Here's a look at the stamp set I'm going to create with today, and this is new for me, and it is called You Did, which is a play on I Do. This is a wedding set. So the fun thing about this set is it can be serious and it can also be a little funny for example you did so happy for you so happy for your new lives together happy wedding day love is eternal but a good couple's counselor never hurts uh, you know what i'm saying you can have you can have some fun hello marital bliss now the fun begins clink best wishes here's to the adventure of a lifetime enjoy the journey and at the very least pretend to listen to each other. I mean, you know? Okay, if you figure out the thermostat issues, you'll be golden. Let me tell you, 32 years later, still don't have that one figured out, but keep saying I do, a toast to love, and cheers. And then I have these cute little licensed illustrations that I found and turned them into this stamp set. I love the whimsical nature of them and there are coordinating dies to cut pretty much most of it out. Now, I wanted to show you a couple of other products that are designed with this in mind. I'm not going to use this today, but this is the You Did Word and Shadow. And this cuts out the You Did in the style of typography that I love to do my word dies in, along with the shadow die. Now notice, there is not a corresponding stamp. I wanted this to be a separate design on its own, but it would look great with the bouquet, with the cake, with the clinking glasses. I mean, it's pretty much designed to work with any of those. And that is the You Did Word and Shadow Die. I also designed two sentiment strip sets as well. You know I like a good themed package. And of course they come in the two different styles. One is the black on white and the other is the white on black which it's just the absence of color but here again there are some fun things in here that can be used happy for this union but also I don't think there's anything super cheeky in here I think it's all kind of generic and fun so these can also be used for any wedding card you have to make and again they come in the black on white, and yes, these can be foiled with hot, with uh, not hot foil, but like deco foil. You can you can heat heat these up in a pouch and well foil them. I don't do it very often, but just so you know. But this is what I'm going to focus on today. I think I'm just going to start with this beautiful bouquet, and I'm going to pick one of the greetings that I like, which actually might be "Love Is Eternal." I'm not sure, or it might be "You Did." But I'm going to stamp on some Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock because I'm just going to do some simple, messy painting. So what I need to do, though, is I do have to pick out some colors. So let's let's uh, let's get this out of the way here. I'm going to bring in my little tray. I don't know if you've ever seen my tray, but this is my favorite. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things in my studio. I think I have four of these. They're from Organize More, and they're just designed to hold ink cubes. And they are the happiest little things to look at, but I need to pick some colors for my bouquet. So let's see here. You know I'm going to go with probably, I'm going to pull a kitsch, flama or kitsch flamingo. I'm going to pull a little picked raspberry. And maybe we'll just do, I'm so predictable, a little bit of spice marmalade. I'm going to grab a mustard seed and one green for the leaves. And I think it will be, I think I'm gonna do mowed lawn. So I'm gonna paint with these colors. But first, I'm gonna grab my Misty so we can get set up and stamp our image. Place my bouquet here. And I actually might stamp it twice just in case I decide to try a different, you know, different paint combination. I'm not sure if I'm gonna actually keep 
the yellow in this bouquet. It kind of depends. But now the reason I wanted to do it in gold, number one, I think gold is pretty. <laughs> but number two, then I'm going to stamp my greeting in gold. And that is going to make it feel very elegant and eh, a little elevated, I guess. All right, I'm just priming this up because it's a brand new stamp. I'm going to bring in my anti-static powder tool. Just lay down some powder all over because I want to make sure if I'm going to flip this paper that we're covered on all sides. And of course, the anti-static powder just takes oil and static off the paper so that when you stamp, all right, you get your sticky embossing ink, your embossing powder only sticks to where that ink is. So let's start out here with the Versamark Clear Embossing Ink. I don't know why I spaced that out, but you know, sometimes I just like to be dramatic, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna bring this down and grab my little Stampin' Bug. Just helps me to put pressure on the misty door and transfer that ink. Now, it did not move, so I'm gonna hit it one more time like that. Bring it down and press. It's so hard when you have clear and a new stamp because you can't really tell. I mean, you can see it, but it's not as easy as you'd think. Now, I'm going to flip this because I want to have a second image, all right? Just to have a backup. You know, I want to want to have a goose to my maverick. Not even a Tom Cruise fan, but I do love I do love that saying. Okay. Hopefully we're not too close. <laughs> we're about to find out. And you know what? If I screw it up, guess what? It's only paper. And then we just start over. All right. But I think we have clearance, clearance. And so we proceed. Bring it down and press. Now I'm going to close this up and grab my paper catch. I figure leave it in the misty until you're ready, right? You know, there's no, no need to get too excited. Then you can open it up, gently take the magnet off. I'm trying to minimize where my fingers go here, but I think, oh, I think I, I think I did it. I think I think we're going to be all right. I'm not going to clean this yet because I may need to stamp it again if I did a bad job. But let's bring in our powder, Ultra Fine Antique Gold. I love this powder. And let it just sit. I just pour, you know, almost the whole, the whole jar out. And then we tap. Okay, see, that's why it's good to stamp a backup. This one I did not do so well on, and I don't think, and that happens. No, I totally missed it. All right, well, you know what? That one's going to be our give, our, our well, it's, we're not going to use it. Let's put it that way, okay? And that's okay, because then we can actually test out how things look on the bad one. All right, it's not, it's not bad. I shouldn't judge my craft supplies and my process, right? But let's be real, it doesn't look that good. Okay. Tap, 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 tap. I'm going to wipe away any excess powder as well as on my paper catch just so that it doesn't contaminate when I use other powders. But I replace this probably every, oh, every couple weeks or so. It's, it's just one little piece of paper. I have quite a bit of extra powder actually that's stuck in here. I'm not sure why. You know what I'm going to do though. I'm actually going to magnet that down because I think, I don't know why this is so staticky. I mean, honestly, it could just be the time of year also where, where I live. I live in Minnesota. And of course, this is the world of indoor heat, right? And everything's very dry, um, very dry right now. So I'm going to work on this with my angled shader, just try to get it as cleaned up as possible. I don't want it to be this messy. Ooh. 
voila. Now see the other one, it's not horrible. I just missed that center detail, right? All right, let's get set up to paint. I'm going to use my water brush today and this is just such an all purpose water brush. I love it so much to get it started, right? I always give a good, give a good squeeze to the barrel, get that water flowing, right? Cause you want it, you want it flowing out there. And then I'm gonna start here at the base and I pulled another cube out. This is tea dye. And what I'm gonna do is just the old smush onto the mat because this mat is so cool in that it lets you easily see what you're picking up. And then I'm just gonna bring in some color like that. Simple painting. In fact, I wanna tell you a little true story. I bought expensive watercolors there is a video on my channel where I'm using them and swatching them out. And, but the reality is I'm not that good of a painter. And if you have some inks that you stamp with, I feel like unless you're going to go hog wild and become the world's greatest painter, you don't really, you don't really need more. You know what I mean? Like this is totally fine just to have some inks. Now, whether you use distress ink is up to you. But now I love this because this sort of holds the wetness, if you will, in. And not that there's that much wetness going on, but here I'm going to squeeze my brush until the water runs clean. Okay. And then I'm just going to wipe this away and we're ready for more color. All right. So now I want to start with the round swirly flowers, which I think I am going to make you know what? I think I'm going to go Kitsch Flamingo. I think I'm going to make those ones because they're bigger, softer. Okay. So there's the Kitsch. But, 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 but I also might put a little uh, picked raspberry in the center like that. Okay. So let's first pick this up. And however much water you squeeze out is how watery it's going to be. So it's really up to you. And you know, you just kind of gotta get a get a feel for it and then just paint and of course the embossing resists oh, I almost got in the paint there uh, it resists the color so your pretty shiny beautifulness will show through and that is pretty cool okay so there's one little light flower it's so funny the light in here is reflecting on my eyes so strongly on the flowers. It's actually hard for me to see the flowers, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Okay, just kind of coming in here. And that's the one that I didn't get all the detail on, but that's okay. I'm going to come here, squeeze out a little water, right? And then bring some of that water over here because I want this to be a little damper as I bring in a little darker to that center like that. Right, I just want it to have a little, a little swirly twirly with that sort of different look. And if you get too much water and you think, oh, I don't like it, you can always come back, kind of clean off your brush and then just kind of come back in and pick it up. Right, like that. Cause I think I had a little, I think I had a little too much color. Also, novice painters of the world like me, don't be afraid to move your paper because it makes it easier. Now maybe just a little out there. Okay. And you can go back over it with more water if you like, right? See that? Look at me. It's like I know what I'm doing, sort of. It doesn't, so stamp inks don't quite move like a watercolor, a true watercolor on true watercolor paper, but don't be afraid to just, you know, play. I, I really like this Tim Holtz paper. I feel like um, it's just so white and bright and that is something I love about it. It's just very crisp. So there, just a couple pink flowers. Now I'm gonna leave that ink there for now because I don't know what's next other than I'm gonna bring in this little spiced marmalade, which is reading <laughs> not orange at all, but it is. Tell you what, it is orange, okay? Picking this up, a little water, and we're just gonna come here and just do these. 
So having a little brush like this is so nice because it just makes it very easy to get into those small spaces. Like that, isn't that cute? I do like that there are these little circles. Oh, there's another little friend there. I didn't even see that little friend. Right there. So just a little color in that little friend. And one over here. Oh, the little ones are all over. They're so cute. I don't know why I didn't notice, but now we'll color them. There's actually a lot going on in this little image and I love that. And if you get out of the lines, don't worry. It does not matter because we are going to come in with a really pale color and try to kind of join these backgrounds a little bit. I may have just changed my mind. I may do my twisted citron here for my green. I don't know. I'm going to see how it looks first when I lay it down. It's hard for me. Actually, you know what I should have done? I should have used my re-inker. <laughs> I never think to do that. But let's see here. We're just going to paint in this green like that. Twisted citron is so pretty. I mean, you almost can't. You can't go wrong with it. It's just, it's just a magical bright green. I'm not putting much water into this at all. I'm trying to keep it, I'm not squeezing the barrel of this pen. I'm just kind of letting it go, picking it up. That looks like a leaf to me. Mm, did I get some in there? Maybe. There we go. I think that's really pretty. And again, it's so simple, right? There's not, there's not a lot happening here. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to pick up a little bit of this. Just want to make sure I'm got in here because there's a little area that should be filled. Yes, indeed. So you can go back over any area in the flowers that you feel like maybe you missed. Totally, totally fine to bring in some more color, do a little more layering. You know, just get it kind of funky. I am going to fill these little tiny circles with this. Now I'm not squeezing any water to speak of. I'm just dipping in a little bit of the picked raspberry in each of these openings as I can. And the embossing kind of serves as the container, right? It kind of holds it in place so that you're not spilling out. And even if you do, it's no big deal. Dot, dot, dot. I'm barely touching it. Oh, and dot there as well. Oh, I like that. Now this little swoop de doo could be green. I don't know why I didn't see that before. So I'm gonna get that cleaned out. I'm just gonna drag in a little. Let's get you into the picture. Like that. Okay. Isn't that pretty? Now to kind of fill out the inside, I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna let this just dry for a second and I'm gonna kind of just mix these together and water it down. Now I want to test it out over here to see like do I like do I like that? Should it be lighter? Because the more water you add, the lighter it's going to be in there. And that's a, that's a nice lightness. So I'm going to pick up from here and I'm going to carefully come in with this light color. Just sort of paint on the inside to give a background, if you will. And of course, it's gonna be messy on the edges because I'm not gonna go all the way out. I'm just gonna kinda of go like that. Okay, working our way. Isn't that nice? So simple. So again, the amount of water gives you that really pale shade. And that's my little painting. It's not bad, right? I mean, you know. Zoom in here a little more. Look at that. I mean, it's not perfect. But it is kind of messy and pretty. And the nice thing is it has shine, right? So it's gonna look really pretty. Once this is dry, I'll grab the coordinating die and we'll cut it out. Right now I have my coordinating dies and it is that die. So I'm going to take my Beetalon snips and just cut out that. 
get in there and cut the inside and the inside. I'll try to, because you only have to do it once, get the little tiny nubbies off because then you're less likely to poke yourself and bleed from tabbed dies. So I'll clean that up, get it lined up on here. Got the coordinating die taped into place, so I'm gonna go ahead and run that through my die cut machine. All right, let us see what our little bouquet looks like. All right, that is the bouquet for our card. Moving on to the greeting. I'm not sure which greeting I'm going to do, but I'm gonna do the same process that I did for stamping the other with the Versamark and the clear powder. I'm gonna do that off camera, cut both of these out, and we can take a look at which greeting we might wanna use. I went ahead and embossed with a 3D folder using the Simon Says Stamp Spun Glass. I thought this would be really cool texture to have. And how I do this on my Gemini is I take a clear Gemini Junior plate. I take my metal shim, which is a little warped, and then I will do this. Now I could have added in the plastic shim as well to get a deeper emboss, but because I'm just looking for texture, I think that looks really good. So I am going to figure out my placement. Now here's what I'm thinking. I really love Hello Marital Bliss. I think I'm gonna save love is eternal for another card and i'm going to grab a note card but we're definitely going to stamp a greeting on the inside so let me get set up to do that i'm going to make a usa2 so this is 11 inches by four and a quarter and we will score it right at five and a half let a nice fold and press that down with my teflon bone folder and because this pops open, I am going to use a little low tack tape to tape it closed like that. Also, while I'm here, I've been trying to do this more on camera. I am going to stamp my handmade stamp on the back. I'm just gonna ink this up in some of the flannel from Simon Says Stamp. It's such a nice gray and I like to have sometimes a very neutral back to my card. Isn't that cute? It's very light, very pale. It doesn't have to be perfect. It rarely is when I'm stamping by hand. Um, but I will have a link to Bossy Jossy who makes these in the description box if you're interested in checking her out. Sometimes I will bring in a piece of grip mat, the grip media mat, because it actually helps my card to not move while I'm trying to glue things down. And sometimes that's very helpful when you work on a slick surface like a glass mat. It's probably the only drawback to a glass mat because I have loved switching over to this surface. We're gonna stand up here, excuse my head if it gets in the way. Actually, I actually think I'll go that way because I've got a little, got a little something there. And I wonder what that is. It looks like a little piece of glue or, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to press too hard. I guess it's going to be on there. You can barely see it, but I know it's there. Okay. So what I want to do is just have Hello Marital Bliss centered. And then look, the bouquet almost kind of feels like it's supposed to nestle in like that. Isn't that cute? Got to have some people get married. Well, I, my daughter has some friends who are getting married, so maybe, maybe I will save this card for them because they're kind of well, they're kind of cool people. I'll take the backers off. I'm using the thicker foam squares from Simon Says Stamp. Really like the loft that you get from these, and I think I'll hold it right there. Let me grab my liquid glue. I'm gonna put a little daub on each foam square because this just gives me a little float time before I commit and just in case I need my ruler I have that here and I'm going to set this right in the center looking side to side making sure it's about the same ah, I don't even think I need a ruler but let's, the bliss dips down purposefully but the marital oh yeah that looks good and gently tap so it doesn't move. Mm, love that. 
And again, get the backers off of the same depth of foam square. Add the glue, like that. So it's just a little bouquet, like that. Oh, I love it. All right, I'm gonna grab some sequins, confetti style. They're, this sequins are reading really um, dark gold. Hmm. I actually don't want sequins. I know sometimes you have to know when to retract the boop. This is the card I like. So let's stamp on the inside, shall we? I have to use the thermostat greeting because that just rings very true to my heart. And I think, honestly, in marriage, that's a little things, you know? No, and you know what? I don't think anybody has a perfect union and those who do, I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm envious and suspicious. <laughs> Actually, that's not centered. I'd like it to be more centered. Oh, I'm not suspicious. I just, you know, it's, it's, always, a, it's always an evolution. All right, I have some scrap paper now that I keep just out of reach here on my desk, which was truly the smartest thing I've done in the last month, which is to cut a bunch of, well, it's actually, I'll show you. It's the leftover paper that I use when I'm um, organizing my stamps and dies and stencils and I put in the paper. This is this cheap Nina Index. It's great for having a little stash, a little basket like this, or it's not really a basket, so that you can do things like what I'm about to do, which is practice stamping. But first, let's open this up. I'll take my tape out. I'm gonna save that though, because I always tape them closed when I shoot them. I'm gonna move this out of the way so that I have a nice firm surface, and then I'm gonna bring in the magnets that I bought to go with my mat, just to hold open the card, which is really great. And I'm just gonna stamp this in black ink, so let's do, let's do some practice, okay? Uh, press, hold, lift. I mean, that's pretty good, right? Press, hold, lift. Yeah, you know what? You don't need to practice anymore. You're looking great. And if I screw it up, it's fine. Here we go. Press, hold, lift. If you figure out the thermostat issues, issues, you'll be golden. And that is the greeting on the inside. I don't always show the inside greeting. Sometimes I do them, sometimes I don't. Something like this I think would be really fun and this card could be so fun to send to Aiden's friends who are getting married later this year. And that is the finished card project. Thanks so much for watching. You can find links to all of the supplies I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber, I would love to have you. So hit that subscribe button and I will see you back here with another card project soon. To see a few more card projects featuring stamps and dies that I have designed, check out the two thumbnails linked below, and I will see you in those videos.